بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو یور چینل دی اینٹمی کینوس ان ٹو ڈیز کلاس آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس وتھ یو دی ماڈل آف دی اپر لم سو دس از دا ماڈل آف دا اپر لم اینڈ یو آر لوکنگ ایٹ دی اسکیپولر ریجن دی آرم دی فور آرم اینڈ دین دی ہینڈ اینڈ ہیئر یو کین سی دی پوزیشن آف دا تھم اینڈ دا فنگرس سو یو کین ایزیلی آئیڈینٹیفائی دیر دس از دا لیفٹ آرم دس از دا ماڈل آف دا لیفٹ سائڈ so now i will discuss all of the region one by one first of all i will discuss with you the uh, scapular region and in this uh, scapular region you can see first uh, this is the deltoid muscle and i will remove the deltoid muscle to show you the different muscles attached to the scapula so so by removing the deltoid muscle you can see the posterior aspect of the scapula and the anterior aspect of the scapula on the posterior aspect you can see this is the spine of the scapula and the acromion process this uh, area where this muscle is attached is the supraspinatus fossa and the infraspinatus fossa in the supraspinatus fossa you can see the supras uh, um, uh, 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 suprascapularis muscle is attached and here supraspinatus muscle is attached and here you can see the infraspinatus muscle which is attached uh, then there is the attachment of the teres minor muscle and then there is the attachment of the teres major muscle on the uh, anterior aspect you can see the subscapularis muscle which is present and it is uh, it takes origin from the subscapularis fossa so this is subscapularis muscle um uh, it uh, enters it inserts into the lesser tubercle of the uh, humerus while the supraspinatus the infraspinatus and the teres minor muscle they are inserts into the greater uh, tuberosity of the greater tubercle of the uh, humerus bone this is the uh, teres major muscle you can also look at the uh, origin of this muscle that the supra infraspinatus muscle arises from the lateral border and infraspinatus fossa while the teres minor also arises from the lateral border and lower part of the lateral border and at inferior angle you can see the origin of the teres major muscle this teres major mo muscles uh, 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 is attached is inserted on the medial lip of the bicipital groove so these are the muscles of the uh, scapular region also you can see over here this is the quadrangular space and this is the triangular space so in quadrangular space you can see upper boundary is formed by the teres uh, minor muscle on this side you can see lateral head and the long head of the triceps muscles which are present over here and behind this is the subscapularis muscle from this quadrangular uh, space you can see the posterior circumflex uh, vessels and the axillary nerve emerges also this one is the uh, triangular space and this triangular space is bounded on upper side and the, the superior boundary is the uh, teres minor muscle inferior boundary is the teres major and here you can see the long head of the triceps muscle so on this posterior aspect of the uh, scapular region you can see the different uh, vessels and nerves which are present so uh, these are the different cards of the brachial plexus this one is the medial card of the brachial plexus here you can see the lateral card of the brachial plexus this one is the axillary artery behind which is present the posterior card which is not visible in this specimen so the branch different branches which you can see in this model this one is the lower subscapular nerve which reaches up to the margin of the pectoral um, teres major muscle then you can see this is the axillary nerve which pierces uh, this fossa and it enters into the quadrangular it exit through the uh, quadrangular space also you can see uh, the uh, from the medial card you can see the ulnar nerve which is present over here and this one is the median nerve and you can see the medial uh, and the lateral origins of the median nerve so now moving uh, downward you can see the ulnar nerves enters into the uh, forearm and uh, on each uh, in the center you can see this is the uh, uh, this is the brachial artery which is present and on the medial aspect you can see 
see the ulnar nerve is present and on lateral aspect you can see the median nerve is present so this median nerve the course of the median nerve changes in the upper part this median nerve is present uh, lateral to the brachial artery in the lower part it crosses the brachial artery and it comes to lie on the medial aspect similarly you can see the ulnar nerve which is present on the medial aspect of the brachial artery in the lower part of the arm it leaves the brachial artery it runs posteriorly behind the medial epicondyle where it, where it is joined by the uh, superior ulnar collateral artery and then it enters into the cubital fossa so now first we move on to the muscles uh, different muscles uh, which we have to describe first i will attach the deltoid muscle to the area and you can see just a minute you can see so this is the deltoid muscle and the origin of the deltoid muscle you can see it arises from lateral part of anterior border of the clavicle then from the acromion process and then the cresta the spine of the scapula so this is the origin of the deltoid and it is inserted into the deltoid tuberosity after this you can see uh, i will remove this deltoid muscle and i will uh, show you the first the posterior compartment and in posterior compartment this one is the triceps muscle and the different heads of the triceps muscle you can see this is the uh, short head of the tricep lateral head of the triceps muscle this one is the long head of the triceps muscle and when you remove the triceps muscle here you can see the medial uh, head of the and i move to the anterior compartment or the flexor compartment and in this flexor compartment you can see this one is the biceps brachii the two heads of the biceps brachii the short head of the biceps brachii and long head of the biceps brachii the long head of the biceps brachii taking origin from the supraglenoid tubercle and short head of the uh, brick, uh, biceps brachii taking origin from the coracoid process along with the coracobrachialis so this one is the coracobrachialis muscle and this one is the biceps brachii this biceps brachii then um, inserted into the by the uh, bicipital groove on the radial uh, radius and then uh, when i remove this muscle you can see behind this uh, the uh, you can see this is the musculocutaneous nerve which is present from here you can see this musculocutaneous nerve is the branch of the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and it uh, it is present on this aspect you can see and this is the brachialis muscle which is present over here now so again repeating all the muscles of the arm this one is the triceps its lateral head its long head which is taking origin from the infraclinite tubercle then on the anterior aspect you can see the biceps the short head of the biceps the long head of the bicep along with the crook coracobrachialis and behind the biceps you can see the brachialis muscle which is present So moving on to the forearm, you can see this one is the flexor aspect of the forearm and here you can see the extensor aspect of the forearm. So first I will describe the flexor aspect of the forearm over here and in the flexor aspect you can see the different muscles which are attached to the flexor aspect. First of all the superficial muscle taking origin from the common flexor origin. Here you can see this is the common flexor origin and from here the muscle which are at, uh, taking origin is the first of all the pronator teres muscle then the flexor carpi radialis muscle the palmaris longus muscle then the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis and last of all this flexor carpi ulnaris muscle so these five muscles are the superficial muscle muscles of the superficial compartment of the anti uh, forearm again i uh, repeat taking origin from the common flexor origin the pronator teres muscle the flexor carpi radialis muscle the palmaris is longus muscle the flexor uh, superficialis um, and the flexor uh, carpi ulnaris muscle then i remove the superficial muscles over here and here you can see 
this one is the flexor digitorum muscle and here you can see the pronator quadratus muscle these are the muscles of the lateral compartment and uh, the, uh, these uh, muscles are the brachioradialis muscle the flexor carpi radialis longer and flexor carpi radialis brevis muscle these all the muscles are taking origin from the common extensor origin so these three muscles are the muscles of the lateral side and these five muscles which I have described you are the muscles of the superficial muscles of the anterior compartment and these three are the lateral muscles of the anterior compartment by removing these two muscles these three muscles you can see over here the um, flexor pollicis longus is also present then the nerves and the vessels which are present over here you can see the uh, this one is the as you see from here the brachial artery which is present in the uh, forearm and this brachial artery then enters into the um, into the fossa the cubital fossa and when it enters into cubital fossa it divides into two branches the ulnar artery and the radial artery the ulnar artery is the deep branch and radial one is the superficial branch this radial artery runs in the forearm with the lateral convexity till it enters the uh, it comes to uh, at the lower part of the arm where it enters into the anatomical snuff box and enters on the posterior aspect of the hand similarly the deep uh, one the ulnar artery it gives off the common intraosseous artery and this common intraosseous artery then divides into anterior and posterior intraosseous arteries and these two arteries supply the anterior compartment and the posterior intraosseous artery supplies the posterior compartment this ulnar artery itself runs deep to the pronator teres muscles on the medial aspect of the forearm and it runs superficial to the flexor retiniculum along with it you can see the ulnar nerve which is present and this ulnar nerve also passes superficial to the flexor retiniculum this ulnar nerve is also called the musician nerve also you can see this is the median nerve and the relationship of the median nerve you can see it is present um, this median nerve is present uh, on the medial aspect of the anterior interosseous artery while on its lateral aspect you can see another nerve which is present uh, you can see uh, uh, in this area this is the radial nerve which is entering into the anterior aspect and this radial nerve then divides into deep and superficial branches the deep branch then gives off to anterior interosseous nerve and this is the anterior interosseous nerve which is present in relation to anterior interosseous artery this uh, radial nerve itself it's a superficial branch it is present in middle part in relation to the radial artery and in the lower part you can see it passes superficial to the flexor retinacula and it enters on the posterior aspect of the hand where it uh, divides into muscular branches and cutaneous branches and supplies the thumb and the um, index finger the medial half of the lateral half of the index finger uh, on the posterior aspect you can see the different muscles first, first i will attach these muscles which i have removed So on the extensor compartment, you can see the different muscles which are present and uh, the different six compartments which are formed by the extensor retinacula. So in the first compartment, you can see the muscles which are present are the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis which is present in the first compartment. Then in the second compartment, you can see the tendons which are coming in the second compartment. These are the tendons of the extensor extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis which are present over here which are uh, in the second compartment uh, present deep to the extensor retinaculum. In the third compartment you can see another tendon which is that of the extensor pollicis longus. You can see over here this is the tendon of the extensor pollicis longus. Then you can see the extensor tendon of the extensor uh, indices and extensor digitorum. These both are present in the fourth compartment. The extensor indices is attached to the index finger and extensor digitorum is attached to the remaining finger. Then you can see 
This one is the extensor digit minimi which is present in the fifth compartment. It supplies the, it is attached to the little finger and then you can see the extensor carpi ulnaris. This extensor carpi ulnaris is present. Uh, this extensor carpi ulnaris is present in the sixth compartment in relation to the ulnar nerve. So you can see the ulnar nerve which is present over the flexor carpi ulnaris and the extensor carpi ulnaris which is present. And uh, these are all the uh, muscles which are attached to the arm and the forearm and on the hand you can see the different branches so you can see this is the ulnar nerve which is supplying the um, two and half finger on the posterior aspect similarly this ulnar nerve is supplying the one and half finger on the anterior aspect of the uh, hand and this is the median nerve which is passing deep here you can see this is the median nerve which is passing deep to the flexor retiniculum in the carpal tunnel and it is supplying the thumb the index finger the middle finger and the lateral half of the uh, uh, ring finger so this one this nerve is also called the laborers nerves here you can see the uh, aponeurosis the superficial aponeurosis the flexor aponeurosis which is formed by the uh, ulnar artery over here so these are all the different uh, muscles and different nerves which are present in the forearm arm and hand and uh, inshallah we will discuss the next model in the next class uh, thank you very much for your attention for today's class and allah hafiz till the next class